So these are the normal trays that I use. I got them from Bootstrap Farmer. They are little about two inch trays, shallow trays, 10 by 20. Um, I really like them. The, they're rigid. They're not like the kind of cheap flimsy ones that you, you get at a big box store. So they've, they've come in really handy uh, over the year that I've been using them. Um, it's a standard 10 by 20 tray. Um, I generally plant uh, sunflowers and radishes and pea, uh, pea shoots um, in these trays. And I generally keep my dirt in a one of these totes. It works pretty well to keep things clean. Um, and I'm using sphagnum peat moss. Um, first glance, I mean, it's cheaper. It's about half the price for the same uh, cubic foot of the dirt I buy um, but as you can see I just random reached in here and it you know it's it's good for what it is but I don't know if it's gonna be good for my application um, just from that 110 by 20 tray I pulled out all these sticks I can't use these um, I can't have these in the in my trays because that takes up the space for the microgreens so you know already right there I, I've lost that much um, just from that little bit that I that I've picked up out of this so far um, so right off the bat I, I don't think I'd want to use this again um, but I did want to see um, if there's any kind of difference um, and from using the dirt that I normally would use um, one of the other reasons why I don't really want to use this is I've done more research now and just kind of get uh, understanding of what peat moss is and um, whether or not I should use it or not, and it's not a very ecological friendly alternative. Um, it looks like cocoa core. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, but it's basically dried uh, coconut husks and shredded is comparable to uh, peat moss. So, and it's a little more eco friendly, a little more sustainable. So, I might uh, try that next, but this will work pretty well. Um, as I generally, when I'm done with my microgreens, will throw the dirt um, that's left into my gardens outside or into my compost. So I figured, at worst case scenario, this will go into my compost and it'll be really good for my compost. But we're for right now, we're going to see how it does with the microgreens. Um, so it's late right now, but tomorrow morning I will start soaking my seeds and then I will uh, go ahead and try out this, uh, try planting in this new peat moss and see how it goes all right it's the next morning uh, I call this my day zero it is generally uh, the first day when I soak my seeds and get them into the soil uh, first thing I'm gonna do is zero out my scale here and then I'm going to come over to my seed bin Oh, if I could do this one-handed and just get me a scoop of seeds I use about 120 grams of seeds for one 10 by 20 so let me turn this to grams from ounces so it's 209 so that's way more than I need which generally happens so it's just a matter of going back and forth until I get the right amount here Ooh, I'm trying not to spill all the seeds while I'm at it 30 I was a little zealous today in the, the amount that I grabbed so let's see 120 perfect all right so once I have the 120 grams of seeds I put them in this little satchel here, this is actually for uh, washing like um, delicates, bras and things like that in the washer. I usually just throw it in here and then I'll put it in this bucket with some water and I'll throw a little five pound weight on it to keep them down and once that's all done I'll let them soak for about four or five hours and then I'll come back and put them on. So I'm going to not hold my phone while I get the water situation done, and I'll, but I'll be back in a second. Alright, so it's been several hours, four or five hours. 
Um, it's lunchtime now, so I'm gonna go ahead and get our get our seeds out, and we'll go put these on our onto our peat moss. Now you don't really want to use the water um, because you're kind of washing off all what you know all that gunk off of there, whatever that gunk may be. So I just drain it. And then I'll go ahead and carry it over to the potting table and we'll get to dumping out the seeds. Alright, back over at the table, got the seeds open, ready to put onto our tray. So essentially once I get the seeds put on the tray here, um, onto the peat moss, I'll, I'll give them a nice good watering, top down watering, I'll put a another one of these trays so these pink trays have holes in them these black trays do not and as you can see I keep a pink tray inside of the black tray and this allows me to later on be able to water from the bottom so uh, so this, for this first time though I'll water from the top get a good soaking so let the water soak down um, then I'll take this black tray here I'll put it on top and I'll put a weight on top of it and that will allow it to kind of press the seeds into the soil keep some of the moisture locked in and um, then we let them sit that would be the end of day zero for me and I usually let them sit for another three days um, so it'll be three days in the blackout and once the blackout's done, then we move them into the, the tent to start. Well, this is pre-blackout, sorry. This is sprouting phase. Then we'll move into the blackout phase for a few days. Um, and those will be in the tent while they're in the blackout to get some of the heat um, from the tent. And then we'll uncover them and we'll get to see what they look like. So I'll be back in a second once I get these seeds spread out. All right, so I've got all the seeds in here. Um, it's kind of, you can see... They do get clumped up. It gets hard once they uh, to spread them out once they are wet and they kind of start getting in contact with the dirt. Um, so I tend to overseed a little bit just to account for that. Um, and as you can see, there's some areas that get clumped up. Now one of the things I do try to avoid is putting them directly along the edges. Sometimes it um, you can't help it, but I do try to avoid that as best as possible. Um, trying to do this while recording and stuff this is not probably the best example um, of me avoiding that but the reason I do that is um, I found that the the plants that grow along the outside border uh, they don't do as well as the ones that are more into the center uh, I'm sure it's to do with the amount of soil um, available to them and, and whatnot so um, I generally try to avoid that um, but once I get them all spread out as best I can then I just come in and just do a top watering. Now if you're doing this from a more of a commercial standpoint you're probably going to have a different setup. Um, I'm still pretty small. Um, I only sell at one farmers market and so um, I don't really have a huge setup but you'll, you'll probably want some kind of industrial watering system to, to do this. I'm just using a household watering can for this instance. Um, this, this works for me for the most part and I don't have to really um, worry too much about it. Um, so it does, you know, uh, one thing I'm noticing, this like again, this is an experiment to see how peat moss handles, um, how peat, uh, the difference between peat moss and soil, um, and right off the bat I'm noticing that, um, you know, this peat moss isn't really absorbing the water like it would with the soil. Um, you can see it's just kind of sitting there pooling. That's a little concerning. Um, Normally, I'd water it just like I did, and the the water would soak straight to the you know to the bottom of the tray and then come back up. Um, this looks like it's sitting on top of the tray, so I don't know how that's going to um, affect the outcome of all of this. Especially as I go would normally put a tray on top of this, um, I think I may have to address the the water issue before I might do that. that water is definitely not soaking in there. So I would say that it's a second strike for the peat moss. I'm not really um, impressed with the, its outcome so far uh, but uh, really it all kind of comes down to the final the final product and we'll see how that turns out. Alright so end of day zero um, 
this is basically what I came up with. Um, I ended up taking, because the, the water was just sitting, it wasn't really filtering through the peat moss like I would expect it to, to do, like it would with soil. So I ended up uh, tipping the pink tray into the bottom black tray um, and letting some of the water run into it, as you can see, kind of spilled a little bit here. Uh, problem doing that, I could hear the seeds just dropping into this bottom tray so those seeds are just going to be lost and I'll just take this this is why I'm doing this before the season to to kind of flush out this process and see what I need to to improve on um, so the just the way that peat moss interacts with the water is something that uh, I'm gonna have to figure out um, now the next thing I did is I put this tray on uh, and I put two uh, five pound weights on them to keep this tray kind of keep some pressure down on this to allow the seeds to try to go I want the roots to go down into the peat moss I don't want them to try to grow up um, which they could do because they're they're going to be turned all kinds of different ways so this helps with that um, so I'll let this sit for probably a couple days um, normally I wouldn't put as much weight on here um, but I would also have four or five trays stacked up and the weight themselves would be able to hold it down and then I would just put a little bit of weight on the very top one to for that top tray so this is a little more weight than normal um, so that's an experiment as well um, but we will uh, we shall see how this turns out we'll come back in a few days and um, and see uh, see if we can move them into the blackout phase and let them get some length before we start letting them green up a little bit it's the morning of day three, so let's check out how the sprouts are doing. This would normally be when I would flip over the tray for um, to put them into the blackout phase to allow them to start growing up. So let's see how they're doing. Um, they're doing pretty good. I think I'm going to give them at least one more day before I flip them. Um, which is unfortunate. I had a, with the soil, I have a 10 day cycle. So with peat moss, it looks like I'm gonna have a little bit more. And there's still some sludgy water in there. So looks like we're doing okay for the most part. Soil still looks pretty wet. So I'd say we're okay, but um, it is going a little bit slower. I may put these somewhere where it's a little warmer see if that helps next time but we'll see all right one more day and then we'll go into blackout all right so it's day 10 of the peat moss and sunflower microgreen experiment and I would have to say um, I'm not impressed with the results uh, so there's a few things that I noticed so first of all you can see by how red the stems are that the microgreens themselves never actually got enough water. The, the, the peat moss itself is pretty dry still. You can tell by how it's how flaky it is, but these should have, there was enough water. They always got enough water. They, there should have been enough going in there. So um, what I think happened is this peat moss is just, it, it's not a good, it doesn't absorb water like soil does. As you can see on my fingers, it's wet but it doesn't transport the water quite the same way soil does. So I think that's what happened here. Um, so these um, definitely didn't get enough water. You can tell the seeds didn't come off, they're, they're, the husks didn't come off, they're, um, they're red and they're stringy, and like you can see in this area, they just didn't come out very well. And if I lift up the tray, if I can get it open, I always water from the bottom and you can see there's plenty of water down in there still um, I haven't watered this for two days and there's still water sitting in there I generally have to water these every day with my setup when I have soil because it just wicks the water better and uh, they absorb the water so you can see you know there's water in the tray but they're red they're bright bright red like this one and that that means they're not getting enough water so the water is not being absorbed up from the black tray into the pink tray um, and we can really tell that because look at the the roots normally when I um, hit my 10 day period um, these roots are just filled in the tray so I would say peat moss is not um, while it is a cheaper alternative it is not an alternative that will work for my process 
and ultimately it's not a good ecological um, choice. Um, peat moss is just not sustainable um, from a harvesting standpoint. So while it is cheaper, um, I don't think I will be using peat moss for my sunflowers. That being said, I am trying radishes and alfalfa as well, so we'll see if they do a little bit better. But I think at this point, these uh, these sunflowers are going to go out in my garden and hopefully make some beautiful sunflowers out in the garden. But I do not think I will use these again for uh, my microgreens. I think I will go back to my soil mixture.